talk show where we cover topics about healing from addiction to get, getting rid of your zits. Um, if feeling passionate about something we're talking about, give us a call on our call-in number, 989 402 5414 so you can talk with our coach deb who's been coaching for six years without further ado here's our host deb good afternoon it just turned noon here in uh, michigan eastern standard time and we do have a caller calling in from california and you know what it's really sunny here today it is cold but it's sunny and that alone raises my spirits it's the end of february there's no snow on the ground i mean really seriously what else could you ask for although it may be snowing again today it is not um i don't know what you did over the weekend there were a lot of things going around in town here but i was down with the flu And a lot of people are sick. I mean, a lot. Uh, Several of my friends had influenza A, and they were down for months. But I just had a little stomach bug. If If you have the flu, if you don't feel good, I'm telling you right now to stay home because it's almost a pandemic how many people are down with flus and colds and upper respiratory problems. If you are sick, do not spread your germs. That's how you got it. Be kind and stay home. But I'm so excited to have my guest here today. Her name is Stacy Blanchet. She wears so many hats that it's unbelievable and keeps it all together. I think you're really going to like her. Welcome to Diva Dialogue, Stacy. Thank you very much for having me. My pleasure. So I can't even begin to explain all the things that you do. So I'm going to let you. Wow. <laughs> That's sort of a loaded question, huh? Like, I don't know how long do you have? We have an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know, I like to say that I am an entrepreneur. I'm a film producer. I am an author. I'm a fashion designer. And I'm a senior editor of a fashion magazine out of Germany. Wow. That's a lot of stuff. I know. I just say, I keep it all in one line just so that I don't have to (laughs) bore everybody with all the details that go. Because under each one of those is a whole other story. But um, the most important thing that I do is my my day-to-day business, which is Your Own Girl Friday. But I add all the rest of it. I just fell backwards into it, and it's just taken me on this grand and glorious adventure and by saying you just fell backwards into it you're you mean that um you were just in the right place at the right time well you know i I, i've always done i've had your own girl friday since 2005 and it really started as, as an organization company it wasn't anything major um i did errands for people like a personal concierge And that went until about 2012. And actually, I still do that today. I'm still doing it in 2017, um, which I can't believe that actually we're in 2017. But in 2000, at the end of 2010, um, beginning of 2011, I decided to embark on doing some fashion designing. And when I went down that road, so many doors opened up for me in the fashion industry in terms of the magazines and the movies and um, getting creative in terms of how to understand marketing and retail. And so I embarked on that journey simultaneously as I was still doing Your Own Girl Friday. And so I've had multiple doors, multiple clients, um, having to come up with different marketing strategies because on one end with your own girl Friday, I was playing on a, on a a local stage, but then on the fashion designing, I'm playing on an international stage. So you have to adjust your radar. And in between that were just all of these surprises that came along that I just, you, you couldn't even make them up in your head. I mean, you just really couldn't make them up in your head that they were going to happen to me. And I believe in saying yes to everything, even if you don't know how to do it. Just do it. If you fail, you fail. That's right. You can learn a lot just by that simple philosophy. You can. You know, I mean, it's like I used to be so afraid to fail in my 20s. And Uh I just, you get to your 40s and it's like, oh, you know, 
I can take <laughs> defeats and I mean right. I can take defeats and laugh and just keep going. You know? Right, it's like, right. It takes a lot less shake them time off, to. You know? That's right, <laughs> right. Yeah, that shake off time diminishes as you get older. I think <laughs> it does. I mean, it's like okay, so it didn't work. What's next? You know, right, I mean, right. used to be I couldn't get off my couch for five days if I failed at something. <laughs> right. And I just, thought I was this horrible failure, but it's like, now it's sort of like, you know, no, I mean, something, I, I, I talk to kids a lot, um, because of my story and people have seen me in, in one fashion or another, they, they either see me doing my PR and marketing for clients, or they see me in the fashion and, you know, doing the fashion shows and doing the Oscars and the Grammys and the Emmys. And I, I get the questions, you know, what, what's your one piece of advice? I'm like, go for it all. Go for it all. Yeah, that's good. Without yeah, fear, you have to all. kind of be it, it, fearless. Yeah, who cares? And you know, yeah, unless you lose, you don't want to lose your you don't want to lose your life savings. You know, you want to be right. kind of smart about it. But I mean, just go for it all. Just go for it. Put it all on the table. And just go for it. You know, Let and that is, I think that's a really good piece of advice. And it, and all women should take that advice and. Make it work for them, however, go for it all means to them because it's kind of an individual thing. But you know what amazes me about you is, you know, like, all right, like going for it all for me meant doing this radio station, the radio network. You know, I just went for it. I didn't know if it was going to work or not. But wow, how different it was for you going into the fashion industry. I mean, holy smokes. That's huge. You know, the one thing that I always, you know, I, it, this is just life. Life does this to you, is that I started out in the fashion, and I started out studying fashion design when I was 19, graduated from college at 21 from a major fashion design school in New York, and I didn't go into it. I didn't pursue it. I came back to San Diego, and that I always wonder in my head, and I mean, it's, it's just, it's just, I think it's just natural people do this. What would have happened if I had taken the drive that I had and stayed in New York? Where would my life have really taken me? Mm. And you, you know, you, you can't really play that game because, you know, right. it, it can drive you nuts because you start thinking about all the what ifs. Um, but I mean, you know, um, you know, 30 years later, how different my life could have been. I mean, we don't, I, I have no idea. I could have been washed up by 28 and exhausted. Right. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it is. Um, or I could have been on a glance. I mean, I could, I could be doing my dream living in Paris. I mean, who knows? Mm-hmm. But I think that um, one of the great things that happened for me was I had the rare privilege of attending Paris Fashion Week uh, two years ago and got a chance to go back and meet all the designers that I had wow. grown up looking at and, and, and wanting to meet and just, and wanting to be, I mean, just mm. wanting to be in their shoes, wanting to be them, wanting to have my shows and realizing that um, you can have your dreams and they're just dreams unless they become a reality. They're just a dream. And so until you take the action to make them a reality, um, but I, I, one of the things that happened for me was I realized that I just didn't have it any more in me to want to be them that badly, to give up everything for it. And you do have that to give up everything for that dream. You do. Yes. You do. It's kind of like it's, acting it's, it's of, or being yeah. a musician. You have to give up everything. Yeah, you do. Mm-hmm. It, it's because so many people in, and I, I, everybody always asks me like it's the same as an entrepreneur I just got done doing an interview with a gentleman for the magazine and he made over 300 million dollars in sales last year Wow! and I thought to myself wow I mean what do you I said you know what are you giving up wow. and he goes well a life <laughs> <laughs> you know and he's not even 40 wow. so it's finding you know, his, his challenge in life is finding a way to have an actual life and balance. Mm-hmm. And so it's, you know, it's any time you are driven to succeed to where you are exceeding all expectations, 
and making it to the grand stage, because that grand stage is pretty small. Mm-hmm. You are giving up something. You're going to have, you're going to be doing a, you're going to be doing a tightrope all over the place. And so you have to be very level-headed, focused, and conscious that you want to make sure that you are having some form of a life that, of peace and pleasure that's not just driven by success. It's finding that balance. And I think everybody has that issue. Mm-hmm. Whether you're a parent, whether you're you know, having a radio network, it's trying to find a balance to make a living plus living a life. Exactly. And you know, Mm-hmm. I, I'm a coach, and one of the things that um, one of the tools that we have in coaching is uh, you make a circle, and in that you write, you make like pie pieces, and you write um, spiritual, uh, personal work. You write all these different family, all these different things that you spend time on, and then you draw a line going out in each one, how satisfied you are with that physical, you know, all those things, exercise. And, um, and many, many times it's not, it's lopsided. It'll be like you have a flat tire on one side. And it's especially true with people that focus on their careers. The rest of it is, is flat. And the career is, yeah. but if it's, if that's your choice and you're willing to deal with the, in quotation marks, consequences of that. Or if you have a family that really backs you up and understands that passion, then it's fine. But if you're miserable because you're doing that and it's not truly your passion, then it's not okay. Right? Yeah. I don't know if a lot of people know what is their, I think a lot of people think that they want something until they get it. Mm. And I think um, hmm. you, you almost don't know whether or not you're, you're going to want it until you're there. It's hard to know. You know, you're climbing, you're climbing, and you're, you know, you're doing all kinds of stuff to actually get there. And then once you get there, it's like, ah, oh, I, I didn't know that this wasn't, exactly what I thought it was going to be. This wasn't what I thought it was going to be. There are some people that are extremely focused. Like, for example, this gentleman that I interviewed, he knew he wanted to do real estate when he was six years old. (laughs) Hmm. So, I mean, that there's just some people that are gifted very early on that know what they want to do in life. And that's their single focus. Mm -hmm. My brother always knew he wanted to be in the financial industry and that's always been his focus. He's been with the same company since he was 27 years old when he graduated college. And we're now almost 50. So, I mean, it's like it's a single focus. Right. Right. And, and I some know people what are you blessed mean. with that. Mm-hmm. My youngest son wanted to be a chef from the time he was three years old. Yeah. See, they know. Yeah. And mine mm. was always to be Duran Duran hit the market <laughs> when I was, yeah, <laughs> like 12. <laughs> I think I might have been 12 when they first, and that was it for me. Dynasty and Duran Duran did it for me. I just wanted to be in the fashion industry and, you know, I just, I just, I knew it. And then I just, I don't know. I fizzled out. I didn't, I didn't follow up. I didn't follow through. And so I'm playing catch up in my forties and my fifties, but I don't know if that's a bad thing because Mm. now one of the best things that happens to me doing Paris Fashion Week is that I have a Parisian designer that's coming to me wow. now wanting to come into the United States and have me do her PR marketing because of my fashion background, Ooh. having met me in Paris two years ago, and wow. we've stayed in contact with each other. So I may get that dream, wow. but in a different right. light. Right. And, and, you know, and we ha- always have to look, and you, I'm sure you know this without me saying it, is everything happens for a reason. And it's easy when you look back, when things start falling into place yes. like that. I mean, how cool is that? <laughs> you know? I it mean, is. Really yeah. cool. Or actually, what I say sometimes when you go for it, the dream 